I have a new product. It's the Marshmallow DIY contact mic preamp. So it's basically a piezo preamplifier on a little circuit board. And you would use this if you're thinking about soldering a piezo disc directly onto a guitar cable to use as a contact microphone. I might encourage you to get one of these and add it in kind of on one side of the guitar cable or the other. And that will give you much, much higher fidelity sound, especially at low frequencies. And I'll talk more about that later. And it will also give you the ability to control the gain so you can have a much, much more sensitive microphone. <laughs> And I have two variants of this listed on my website. There's the Marshmallow DIY and the Marshmallow DIY Kit. And they have the same packaging. The difference is that the Marshmallow DIY just has the board and some header pins to go along with it. Whereas the Marshmallow DIY Kit has the board and the header pins and a whole bunch of other little bits and bobs in there with it. And so now I want to show you how the preamplifier works by way of showing you what all of the little bits and bobs are for. And so the first little bit is this row of header pins, which you might not even actually need this. You could probably solder everything directly to the solder pads on the board, but I'm going to solder this on and I'm actually going to put it on kind of the opposite side of the board that you might think. And that's partially just so that you'll be able to read the labels on the board but it's also because this is going to give me a nicer form factor, which you'll see later on in the video. Okay, now I want to look at these two pins labeled P plus and P minus on the board. And those are where you're supposed to connect your piezo disc. And this is the disc that comes with the kit and it doesn't really matter which way you connect it, but by convention you would connect the red wire to P plus and the black wire to P minus. And of course, if you don't buy the kit, you don't have to use exactly this disc. You could use basically any brass piezo disc and you could also use a piezo film like this one here. The only caveat is that whatever you use has to have a capacitance of at least one nanofarad. And of course, the disc that I've given you in the kit meets that requirement, and bigger discs tend to have more capacitance, so that's fine. Smaller discs usually have less capacitance, but even this teeny tiny disc here has almost 10 nanofarads. And these piezo films tend to have far less capacitance, but even this one has more than one nanofarad. So this one is perfectly fine to use with the Marshmallow DIY preamp. And I'll also point out that the piezo disc doesn't have to be right next to the preamplifier. It could be on the other side of a guitar cable like this. But of course, now you have the cable capacitance to worry about. So you just have to check and make sure that the combined capacitance of the disc and the cable is greater than one nanofarad. And so this right here is perfectly fine. Okay, now I want to look at the next two pins over on the board, labeled ground and 3 to 5.5 volts. And of course, that's where you're going to connect power for this board. And I happen to have this nice 4.5 volt wall adapter, which is perfect for this. And so I'll just connect the two leads of that to power and ground on the board. And again, of course, you don't have to use a wall adapter like this. You could use a lithium polymer battery, which is usually around four volts. You could use three A-cell batteries, which should be around four or 4.5 volts. If you happen to have a USB receptacle on hand, USB is five volts. So that would work to power the board. And if you are using this with an Arduino or some sort of microcontroller, you could power the preamp directly off of the microcontroller the preamp draws less than 1.5 milliamps of current. So that should work perfectly well with any Arduino.
So now I'm going to skip a pin and I want to look at these two pins on the end which are both labeled gain. And you need to connect a resistor in between those two pins to set the gain of the preamp. And if you don't connect anything here, the sound is going to be very, very distorted. So this board really doesn't work unless you connect something there. And just for reference, this is the gain equation. It tells you what value resistor you should use to get the gain that you want. And I've also prepared this handy table that relates different resistances to the corresponding gains. And you probably want to use a resistor somewhere between 0 and 50 kilo ohms and greater resistance will give you greater gain. And if you want unity gain, you would use a zero ohm resistor, which means that you would just bridge these two pins with a little jumper like that. And if you want adjustable gain, you can put a potentiometer on there, and I would recommend that you use one with a logarithmic taper. And if you buy the kit, you'll get this little 50 kilo ohm log pot, which is perfect for this. And so it's these two pins on the potentiometer that you want to connect to the gain pins on the preamp. And this little pot isn't that breadboard friendly, so I'm going to bend some of these extra pins out of the way. And then this is how that would go in there. And this doesn't stay in the breadboard like this very well. If you're going to use a breadboard like this, I think you might want to glue the pot down or something. Or you would solder wires onto it and connect it that way. But this at least shows you how to connect it. And then if you don't need adjustable gain and you just want fixed gain and you know what gain you want, I've included this little solder pad on the component side of the board here. And so you could just solder a little chip resistor across those two pads. Or if you wanted unity gain, you could just bridge the pads with solder. And that would kind of permanently fix the gain of the preamp. And then you wouldn't need any other external resistor. Okay, so now I want to show you the audio output. And there are two output pins on this board. There's a DC coupled output and an AC coupled output. And the difference is that if you're powering this board with, say, 4.5 volts, then the DC coupled output will normally be half of that. So in this case, two and a quarter volts. And then the audio output will kind of swing up and down above that, kind of between 0 and 4.5 volts. Whereas the AC coupled output will normally be at 0 volts, and then it'll kind of swing up and down above that, positive and negative, so plus and minus 2 and a quarter volts. So the AC coupled output kind of goes positive and negative, where the DC coupled out is always positive. And you'd use the DC coupled output if you wanted to connect this to a microcontroller or some other digital circuitry because microcontrollers don't really deal with negative voltages. And if you're interested in doing something like this, subscribe to my channel because in an upcoming video I'm going to show you how to use a setup like this to apply reverb and delay and other kind of digital effects to your audio signal in real time. And then so if you just want to connect the preamp to some regular audio equipment like a mixer or a recording interface, then you'd use the AC coupled output for that. And if you buy the kit, I've included this little terminal block to help you with that. And you can solder that on here. And if you have a guitar cable with one end of it cut off like this one, then you could put that into the terminal block there. And you would put the shield of the cable into the ground side of the terminal block. And it's the inner conductor of the cable that would go into the AC coupled output. So that's everything that needs to be connected, but in order to get very good sound out of this, you're going to need to shield the whole thing, which means that both the piezo disc and the preamplifier are going to need to be enclosed in metal, and that metal is going to need to be grounded. And so to facilitate that, if you buy the kit, you'll get these standoffs. 
and those are designed to go on these bigger holes on the circuit board here. And the holes on the circuit board are grounded. So once you put the standoffs on there, then the standoffs will also be grounded. And then if you're putting this into some sort of metal enclosure, then you can screw the standoffs onto your enclosure and that will ground the enclosure. And the standoffs are exactly the same height as the terminal block there. So once you screw those down, you'll get a pretty nice little form factor. And that's also why I soldered the header pins on upside down originally, because I kind of like this form factor. So just to give you a couple of examples here, if you had some kind of instrument like this, you could open it up and just line the whole thing with aluminum foil and you would do this to the lid as well. And then somehow you would screw the standoffs down into the base of the instrument and that would kind of automatically ground the aluminum foil so that the whole thing is properly shielded. And then I guess in this case, your piezo disc would also be in there with it and you would just have power going in and audio coming out. And that would make a pretty nice, fairly well self-contained musical instrument. And so if you want your piezo disc to be far away from the preamp, like on the other side of the guitar cable, then you will separately need to shield the disc and probably the easiest way to do that is just to put a little piece of tape over the crystalline part of the disc to prevent that from shorting out. And then you can just wrap the whole disc in aluminum foil. And the foil should be making a good electrical connection with the brass part of the disc. And so you can just test for continuity. And that does shield the disc. The only caveat here is that the aluminum foil ground will not be the same as the ground in the rest of the circuit, so you have to be careful not to let the shield of the audio cable touch ground anywhere else in the circuit. Like it shouldn't touch the shield of other audio cables because that would create a short. And so just one final example here. I really like to use these tin candy boxes. And when you buy them, they're coated in some kind of plastic, but you can sand the plastic off and then you can solder a wire onto it. And then you can connect that wire to the ground of your circuit like that. And I would do the same thing to the lid of this box as well. And that will properly shield the preamp. Yeah, so that's all you need to do to get set up and start recording and start making sound with your DIY contact mic preamp. I just wanted to let you know that I also did many experiments that show you how to optimize your setup and how to really get the absolute best sound out of a contact mic like this. But this video is already a lot longer than I intended it to be. So I think I'm gonna save some of that for a future video and at this point I would normally tell you to subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. <laughs> However, I also noticed that at the moment I happen to have 69 subscribers on this channel and 420 subscribers on my main channel and that, folks, is just too good. So don't subscribe to my channel. I'd like it to stay that way forever. And that's all I have to say for now, so I'll see you next time. Bye.